On August 6, 1945, the first atomic bomb was exploded on Hiroshima, Japan. Soon after, the bomb would be in the Soviets' hands. During this period, copies of Tesla's papers on the beam weapon were shipped to Wright Field in Dayton, Ohio. There, a top secret research program began called Project Nick to find a defense against nuclear missile attack. Copies of his, some of his papers were sent to Wright Patterson in 1945, not to my facility, not even the pre predecessor of my facility, but to another part of the base for analysis. Um, and then they vanish. Nobody seems to know what happened to them. In 1952, Sava Kasanovich obtained permission from U.S. authorities to return Tesla's estate, still stored in New York, to the inventor's homeland. I personally believe that the U.S. government may have overlooked some things of value in the Tesla papers before they were released to the Yugoslav government. A Tesla museum was opened in Belgrade by Yugoslavia's president, Marshal Tito. But during the Cold War, the museum was off limits to Western scientists and scholars. Then, in 1960, Soviet Premier Khrushchev announced that the USSR had developed a powerful new weapon. There was concern in the US that the Russians may have access to Tesla's missing papers on beam weapons in Belgrade and elsewhere. It's possible that these papers on the particle beam weapon were obtained by the Soviet Union, but it wasn't the only copy. In other words, I think that the United States has always had Tesla's papers on particle beam weaponry. An American beam weapon program began at Lawrence Livermore Laboratories but engineers could not produce an effective directed energy weapon. I've always been a sort of a fan of Nikola Tesla, an admirer, and definitely he had the concept of a charged particle beam weapon back in the 1930s. I haven't a clue, to be quite honest, how he meant to actually do it. In 1978, Evidence suggested that the Soviets were attempting to build a huge beam weapon near Semipalatinsk in the Ukraine. Soon after, President Ronald Reagan announced the Strategic Defense Initiative in March 1983. I call upon the scientific community in our country, those who gave us nuclear weapons, to turn their great talents now to the cause of mankind and world peace to give us the means of rendering these nuclear weapons impotent and obsolete. Tesla's concept for a beam weapon defense shield was finally taken seriously by the United States to combat the destructive threat of atomic weapons. In spite of circumstantial evidence, there is no direct proof that Tesla's ideas or plans were used in the Strategic Defense Initiative. And even today, after decades of investment in research, scientists still disagree on whether beam weapons are realistic. Basically, let me just make a short statement. That's all I'm really at liberty to say, is that a considerable amount of effort has taken place in the United States and in a number of other countries trying to get these things up to a real weaponizable status. Let me stop at that point. No U.S. government archive has any record of Tesla's technical papers which were copied immediately after his death. And what has become of Tesla's great dream to transmit electrical power without wires? This is the Navy and Air Force High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, or HARP, in Gakuna, Alaska. 
The large antenna array is designed to beam high energy microwaves into the ionosphere. Tesla was a genius because way before anybody knew or even understood the physics of the Earth and what we call today the ionosphere, which is a layer of ionized particles about 80 kilometers above the Earth, he conceived it and uh, he tried to use it to produce a variety of new concepts. The HARP project evolved from a patent filed in 1987 in which Tesla's work is referenced. It proposed using the ionosphere like an enormous electrical circuit to transmit power around the planet. It even described a means of changing the weather by superheating portions of the upper atmosphere with microwave energy. Tesla proposed that it might be possible to modify the weather by using radio waves. Uh, I believe that this is impossible. Ionospheric modification is still in its early experimental stages, but microwave technology has already made it possible to transmit wireless power with the use of satellites. We go to Alaska, and in Alaska there is natural gas. In order to send it somewhere, you have to create a pipeline. That's very expensive. So we said, all right, let's go into Alaska, create microwaves from the natural gas, send them to a satellite at a particular geosynchronous orbit, put a reflector there, and send it to Japan. And in Japan now, you get the antenna, which transforms these microwaves into 60 hertz, and you get electricity. So you make, essentially, Tesla's dream. The scientific man does not aim at an immediate result. He does not expect that his advanced ideas will be readily taken off. His work is like that of the planter for the future. His duty is to lay the foundation for those who are to come and point the way. He was special. I mean, he was unique. He was unusual in all sorts of ways. And if we are to understand our own creativity, our own ability to invent, there's an awful lot to be learned uh, by studying the way in which he created. The day when we shall know exactly what electricity is will chronicle an event probably greater, more important than any other recorded in the history of the human race. Then, it will be a mere question of time when men will succeed in attaching their machinery to the very real work of nature. See the excitement coming. Nikola Tesla, visit PBS online at pbs.org.